Hello and welcome back. Fair warning, this is an unabashedly sponsored video from Xur. They did not pay me for it, nor asked anything particular for the video, but they sent me the device for free. It all accidentally started when I made a non-sponsored review of their first device, because I liked it very much. Xur took notice and they have been sending me new and improved ones since then. To our greatest joy, of course, since we use them constantly to scan and archive our Ray Vintage documentation. This new one is a little different as it is a much more budget-friendly device than the high-end ones I have reviewed so far. Hello, the people from Xur, Caesar, whatever it is, have sent me their next invention, the new model. And I have a quick uh, scanning job to do, so I thought why don't not use that one uh, because it's much lighter, much simpler to set up, also much less costly than the one I would reach for usually, which is the big Xur Pro model, which I use for the big jobs. So let's give it a whirl. So this is the new, I don't know what it's called, a fancy something. I'll put a link and it's a much more affordable version of a scanner but it supposedly can also do what the big brother does and it's also supposed to be usable for as a webcam which actually is quite interesting to me which is what, why i wanted it so you can tell wow it's super light super small where the camera ends oh it still has illumination i thought it didn't you can see the difference here. This is a small guy compared to its big brother. That's the Pro 24 Pro. So much smaller. I just guess. I guess you just plug it in. Okay, we have it set up, and right away I see a problem: is that it has real trouble separating the document. From the background, of course, my background is fairly light. I removed the white that I had, but that wasn't enough. So, I am going to grab the mat that comes with the other Xur, which is very dark, so that will work right away, I suppose. Yes, it does, but they don't include it in the default, and I suppose you would like to have something like that. Anyhow, this is how it sees it, so now it's much better. So, off we go, scan one, scan the other page. And now we have the interesting HP schematics. So will it be big enough? It just fits. Perfect. All right. So I won't even put a glass piece on it. This is for a quick job. So up oh, here we go. So there is no zoom, but there is zoom on this device. So what you do is that you get it lower, way, 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 way lower, and then you can see the little details. There you go. Focus. There you go. It has a little focus button on top, and here we go. So you can. This is what they call their macro mode. Uh, if you want some details or scan smaller things, but. I want to scan really large things, so I do this. Got it. Got it. All right. Quick and dirty HP manual done. Searchable PDF because I want OCR in English. Um, image processing mode here, you want to be careful. You want to do keep original image. Uh, medium quality should be more than enough. I didn't see this low, medium, and high. High takes a lot more uh, memory space, and I didn't see a big difference in the um, output, so I keep medium. I confirm it, and it's going to put it in documents. I want that to become desktop. Save. 
Let's see what it did. Confirm. I'm gone. Put it right here. Is my chain done? Voila! Hold on. Boy, do I hate Adobe Reader. And now I should be able to select the text. Here we go. It's all been uh, OCR'd and recognized. You can see it's, it has ample resolution. It's going to be far better than most manuals that are out there. Far, far, far better. There's just no problem. I'm being lazy and filming from the screen, but I'll put the, I'll put the scan online as all my scans. And you see, this is for the cesium clock. So it's a cesium beam tube and it has absolutely no problem with the resolution. Okay, one last thing I need to try is the, um, it, suppose, it supposedly can flatten the book pages, uh, which is something that the uh, higher end model does with a laser. This one has no laser, so it must be all uh, camera recognition. And first of all, my book hardly fits on this one. Curve book and okay, and it's supposed to, yeah, okay, yeah. let's see, it doesn't look quite correct. Yeah, see, so it does it only with optical recognition, so you completely missed that one. That, that's where the pages center is. So, usually, you can fix that. There you go. So what I have to do is move that guy back to where it belongs. So it's not going to be as reliable as the laser thing. Okay. Much better. That's what I did with it. That is the original down there. Let's try with something a little bit more forgiving. My uh, TTL data book. And see what it does with it. Scan done. And this time I think he got it. Yeah, kind of similar. It didn't quite. It did its best here, but it didn't quite get the middle of the page as a, the, the laser thing. It will get it all the time. Perfect. This one. It is a little bit lot more limited. There we go. We'll fix you. Save. All right. Fixed. Done. So also the uh, fancy is might not be as powerful as the, the it's big brother. I tell you when I really like it. Like today, right? Uh, busy doing something. I don't have much space. I want to scan a manual quickly, and then all I have to do tap. Dink, blomp, donk, and off you go, you are scanning. So here you can compare side by side my 10 minute scan with the scan of, I couldn't find it, this manual is not online actually, but there is one that covers the same power supply, and that's, a, uh, that's the official Agilent one. That's the, that's the official Agilent from the omnipotent former HP. And there's, I can't select the text, mine. No problem, I can't select the text. Fully text searchable. You see the sort of quality that it has. Compare to the quality of the search scan. It's just night and day. So another thing it can do that I was really interested in is that apparently it's a streaming webcam. Like imagine I'm working on the gizmo and I want uh, to show it on the live stream. And this is in OBS, so it shows up like a normal camera. And I can switch to, there you go, there it is. So that's the view being streamed from here. Also, it worked fine. I immediately noticed some image delay and a swimming effect when objects were moving too fast. I attributed that to the limitation of the USB 2 link when working at 4K resolution. 
Sure enough, all the problems disappeared when I switched to 1080p resolution, which is what I film and stream at anyhow. So a competent streaming camera provided you use it at 1080p. So if you don't have OBS, if you're not set up like I am, they have their own version of it. Oh, well, there you go. Now this one at least at the correct aspect ratio, it has zoom on it. Oh, that's pretty neat. Alright, what can you do? I guess you can doodle. Doodle. Uh, you can erase your doodle. There's a laser pointer. Here is a beautiful face of a thing. Here's your bomb spotting. Vertical keystone. Oh, I need a lot of that. Oh, that's pretty cool. Look at that. I guess it's they do that for their documents, right? It's pretty easy for them to do it for a live camera. Mm. Yeah, it has pretty amazing resolution, so that's no compared to a regular camera. So some parting thoughts on this device. This is definitely a budget offering and I am a bit spoiled because I have their high-end Pro 24. The Pro has the laser pitch flattening, which is more precise than the camera offered on the Fancy, and its lighting is far superior. But as you saw, the Fancy is a competent and very high resolution scanner, even if it took a little bit of tweaking to get the pitch separation perfectly right. The included OCR is just as good as the one on the Pro, and really is an excellent and incredible value at that price point. The camera streaming is convenient, but it's only usable at 1080p, at least in my OBS setup, which is not a big drawback. I will probably use it as an accessory camera in my live streams because the mount is so easily adjustable and it takes so little space on the bench, which is its main draw for me. It's now permanently on my bench and I find myself reaching for it for a quick scan job because it's so easy to grab and set up. So here you have it, a new budget offering from Xur, maybe not as powerful as their top-end scanner Monster, but at a fraction of the price. It's something you can easily justify for an occasional scanning job or a streaming tool.